Hi, my name is Cold Bear, and let's start this Steam Venture Sale video with Detroit Become Human. So here you'll become an android, three different ones to be exact, and experience the world through their robotic eyes. Your decisions will dramatically alter how the game's intense branching narrative plays out. Here choices really matter. Basically, the whole game is built around your choices. You can't do anything here except to choose, well, and walk around a bit. Every decision you make, no matter how small, affects the outcome of the story. Just like in real life, a long time ago you somehow decided not to become an outstanding penis doctor. This decision and hundreds of millions of years of evolution before that led you to this very moment listening to my voice as I speak cringy nonsense. Anyway, in Detroit Become Human no playthrough will be exactly the same. You can replay again and again to discover a totally different conclusion. Well, let's be honest, you probably won't do that, but it's nice to know that the ending you got is really unique. North God. This is an RTS game based on Norse mythology in which you play as a clan of Vikings trying to conquer a mysterious newfound continent. In this simple strategy game you will find lots of victory conditions, atmospheric music, changing seasons and, as you can see, pretty nice art design. Also, there's a fun fact for you, the game only needs one gigabyte of Cosmos in your hard drive. It's hard to believe how optimized this game is. Also, by Cosmos I of course mean space. They say that space is endless, but why we are running out of it? So often then. Anyway, that won't be a problem with Northgard, that's for sure. Also, the game has a decent campaign with a good story. Sadly, Northgard's AI is cheating with infinite resources and manpower, meaning that developers couldn't create really good intelligence that could win against humans on its own. But nevertheless, Northgard is a good RTS game for a few days. Or even more, maybe you'll fall in love with it. You know, like a tapeworm falls in love with your guts. Yeah, I'm not the most romantic person, I know. Doom Eternal when I play Doom Eternal, it brought me back to my childhood when me and my friends were killing demons all day long instead of playing basketball like every other Lithuanian kid. When Doom Eternal initially came out, I wanted to make a review video, so I recorded all my gameplay. You know, with the best graphics available, it almost set my laptop on fire. And you know what? Even when my computer was actually melting away, the game never froze. Not once. You know why? Because in hell, you cannot freeze. Oh, the puns. Indeed. I can't actually remember when I had so much fun shooting hordes of demons and various monsters while actually feeling the fires of hell under my fingertips. Doom Eternal, in my opinion, has only one bad feature – platforming. Here you have to jump over various crevasses or lava flows with precision. So dying because you failed to calculate the distance and jumped straight into the molten rock is not very nice. There is a special place in hell for the developer who decided to go this path. Frostpunk you are the ruler of the last city of Earth. It is your duty to manage both its citizens and infrastructure. Optimization and resource management often clash with empathy and thoughtful decision making. If your population is huge, they need more food, so it's nice if some of the people die out doing some harsh labor. Then you get more food for the rest of them, but that will put you in a hard position as a leader. You can go full retard and become a dictator, but then people will rise against you. But then you can just beat them and make them obey. Send their children to work in minds and in general let a few people die to save the rest, even against their own will. Generation Zero the game was really hyped upon a release, and when people didn't get a masterpiece, bad reviews started to flow. That is a story of many games, and Generation Zero definitely doesn't deserve that, because it may not be a masterpiece, but it's not a bad game as well. Here you will explore alternative Sweden in 1989. One day, Swedes woke up early in the morning to, you know, to milk their reindeer herd, because obviously that's what they do in Sweden, and then instead of their beloved deers, they saw evil robots everywhere. I don't know where those robots came from, but I can only assume that it's the work of evil Norwegians or even more evil Finnish people because they were in envy of all the reindeer Sweden had. 80% of recent reviews are positive, but those 20% of negative ones are still a big number, so be careful, make sure the game is for you. They are billions. It's impossible not to love the visuals of the game, such nice details are usually not present in the games where you look at things from afar. So it is a strategy game set in a distant future about building and managing human colonies after zombie apocalypse destroyed almost all of humankind. Now there are only a few humans left alive that must struggle to survive under the threat of the infection. Billions of zombies roam around the world in a massive swarm seeking the last living human colonies. So you must build a town and protect it from zombies, that is a simple and genius 
genius idea. While it is surely not new, similar missions of building and defending your base against swarms of enemies were implemented even in the first StarCraft in 1998. I'm not saying that you will enjoy this game for a long time, but in a short period it is a great vaccine against boredom. Just not let that single zombie slip in. One zombie is all it takes for your city to burn. Elex I think many of you have heard about this game, just like many of you have heard about George Clooney. But have you ever played with George Clooney? No, right? So Elex is like George Clooney. The main difference between them, you can afford to buy Elex and not George Clooney. What is this nonsense? I don't know. So this is an open world action role-playing game from the creators of Gothic series. It is set in a post-apocalyptic science fantasy universe full of original characters, deep moral choices and dinosaurs. Yeah, you can be slain by a penis or raptor here. Well, they are called differently in-game, but anyone who slays you is a total dick, that's for sure. Also here you will have a jetpack, and that is amazing, because you can explore not only horizontally, but also erect yourself vertically and find some nice treasures hidden high up the hills. What will you find? I don't know, but definitely not George Clooney. Well, at least not one that you can afford. And now subscribe for more concentrated jokes. Like really, do that now. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Disco Elysium, the final cut. This game doesn't care how dumb you are in real life, because here you can also act dumb and every decision you make matters and changes the narrative around you. There won't be situations where you decide to pick the dumbest answer and still get the same outcome as if you pick the smartest one. It's not Skyrim, you know, where you have four answers but only one outcome. The one which the director of the game liked the most, not you. You know, I always feel this way when I play Star Wars games. Evil Dude says, join me, and all the answers are some dumb stuff like, never, I will never never betray the light and other Marinism like that. In real life I would say yes at last, let's be Sith together, let's go and kill the younglings. Well that escalated quickly. So nothing like that will await you in this collision where you will play as an alcoholic psycho detective with memory loss. Although be warned that this game consists mainly of talking, be sure it's for you. Rain World here you are a slug cat. The world around you is full of danger and you must face it alone. Separated from your family in a devastating flood, you must hunt for food and shelter between terrifying torrential flows that threaten to drown all life. So you dream about being not a slug cat, but a fish cat instead. But here your dreams, just like in real life, never become a reality. Climb through the ruins of an ancient civilization, evade the jaws of vicious predators and discover new lands teeming with strange creatures and buried mysteries. And find your family before or death finds you. And it would be all nice and all, but I can see a soul slike among the tags of the game. So be assured, be absolutely 100% warranted that death will find you here. Not once, not twice, not three times, not, well, you know what I mean. People on Steam are talking that Rain World has a very steep learning curve, but once you mastered it, you start to feel unstoppable. Also, 92% of positive review score is not a joke. No Man's Sky the game procedurally generates the whole universe. It's still a bit smaller than your mama, but it will be enough for you to dive in for a few hours at least. Or maybe more. A lot of people who leave comments on Steam have from about 20 to 150 hours of playtime. That is a great result. Your voyage here is up to you. Will you be a fighter preying on the weak and taking their potato salad by force? Or a merchant who will find resources on forgotten worlds and exploit them for the highest prices? Or maybe an explorer? Go beyond the known frontier and discover stuff no one has ever seen before, like Portugal's victory in the World Cup or a Russian democracy. Although for the latter you will need to step into a parallel universe, I think, which is still smaller than your mama. The Hyperlite Drifter Drifters of this world are the collectors of forgotten knowledge, lost technologies, and broken histories. Our drifter is haunted by an insatiable illness. He's traveling further into the creepy lands, hoping to discover a way to quiet the vicious disease. I love the look of this game. From each character to background elements, everything is lovingly hand-animated. And the game itself is easy to pick up, but difficult to master. Enemies are kinda hard to beat, and they are many. Hazards will easily crush your puny body, and friendly faces remain rare has 94% of positive reviews on Steam, meaning that it's only 1% short of an overwhelmingly positive title. So if you like pixels and death, this is for you. Far, Changing Tides 
It is absolutely, without any doubt, a work of art. It's an atmospheric vehicle adventure that follows the emotional journey of a boy and his ship as he embarks on a voyage to find a new home. You will sail stormy waters, dive unknown depths and explore forgotten ruins in a beautifully realized world of flood. Game is filled with different landscapes, sun-scorched dusty plains, stormy skies and high seas. You will have to crack many puzzles as well and enjoy interesting mechanics. Also, I can't be silent about a very cool soundtrack that reacts to your actions, amplifies key moments and creates an atmosphere. Really cool. People on Steam are talking that the game is super chill and puzzles are not mind-bending, so if you are like me, you know, a bit dumber, you'll be okay as well. And it also has a beautiful ending. Mutant Year Zero – Road to Eden this is a tactical game that combines the turn-based combat of XCOM with a real-time stealth and exploration of a past human world reclaimed by nature and mutants. They look like someone crossbred Disney characters with Ninja Turtles characters. You know, you control a gritty armed hero that looks like Donald Duck. That should say a lot. You must venture out of the city to explore the zone and one day you might find the Eden of Legends, the ancient heaven in the middle of hell. I guess with mountains of potato salad and rivers of cold beer. Maybe you'll find Find your answers there. Then again, maybe the place doesn't even exist. Game has a really beautiful graphics, great humor, and an interesting story. Also, very positive reviews on Steam. By the way, you may be interested in the new game by the same developers, Miasma Chronicles. It will be released next year. Check it out. Encased. People are talking that Encased is like an inbred baby of Mass Effect and classic Fallout, and that is never a bad thing. Although game mechanics are more complex than in Fallout, and that, I'll say honestly, that is bad. Do not fix what is not broken. How many times developers must have to hear that weapon jamming and fatigue on skills doesn't make your game better or intriguing? It makes it worse for 99% of the players or so. But this is a great game character-wise. A recommendation of one player is just to play as a convict with an intellect score of 1 and you will see that developers actually care and took their time to create a narrative for a dumb person. That sounds cool, especially that the writing in this game is actually really good. Tunguska The Visitation a long time ago, when I still had my Discord channel, I used to talk with the developer of this game about food. He's Chinese-American and he knows how to cook some nice meals, and so do I. So we shared our knowledge left and right. The question is if he can cook a good game as well. So this is an isometric survival RPG that brings you to a perilous Tunguska exclusion zone, where you'll face deadly traps, infectious mutants, bandits and well-armed rogue military. Game is inspired by the same story as a stalker, the roadside picnic written by the Strugatsky brothers. Keep in mind that they wrote the story before any serious nuclear accident ever happened, so it's not actually tied to Chernobyl or any other nuclear disaster. Just a post-apocalyptic, gritty and dark Soviet Union filled with unexplainable horrors. Although you can literally describe the Soviet Union without any post-apocalypse in it with the same words. People in the comments are saying that if you like Stalker or Atom RPG games, it's a no-brainer. Also, it has very positive reviews on Steam. Just keep in mind that this is an Actual shooter controlled by WASD and mouse. Metal Helsinger. This game is very new, so the discount is not as big as I would want it to be, but it has 97% of positive review score and that is insane. Here you will kill demons to the rhythm of metal and vengeance on an infernal journey through the eight hells. This is a rhythm FPS bursting with monsters, gorgeous weapons and heavy metal music created for this game by amazing metal geniuses. Like Serge Tankian, for example. Yes, yeah, Serge himself sings new songs he created especially for this game. How cool is that? Ultra cool. Yeah, that's the spirit. Thanks, demon. Do you want potato salad for your soul? Of course, that's a great deal. Oh, sorry, I changed my mind. Your soul is worthless. What? Come on! Anyway, if you like fast-paced first-person shooter games, like Doom for example, search no more. Metal Helsinga is all you need to kill your boredom with style. Beautiful Desolation Every game nowadays has some dragons, vampires, wizards, halflings and other cliché stuff that we probably do not need anymore. There's plenty of that everywhere you look. And I think that exactly these thoughts were crawling in the minds of developers of Beautiful Desolation. They wanted to create something original, something different and never seen before. And I can clearly say that they succeeded. I promise that story-wise you never played anything like that. A whole game feels like some wet surrealistic sci-fi dream of Carl Sagan with weird characters, 
weird conversations and weird atmosphere in general that somehow still makes sense. If you have ever read anything crazier by Philip K. Dick, you will understand what I'm talking about. And this game is pure art, but it's hard. Puzzles you have to solve are no joke, so prepare to be mentally humiliated and deal with the fact that your IQ is not as high as you think it is. Mad Max this is without a doubt one of the best open world games on Steam. 91% of positive reviews are there for a reason. You will play as a lone warrior in a savage post-apocalyptic world where cars are the most important thing, just like potato salad is in ours. You will find an action-packed open world where you must fight against vicious gangs of bandits and stay alive in the wasteland. You want nothing more than to leave the madness behind and find solace in the mythical plains of silence. Along the way in your search you are challenged with a treacherous Dangerous missions as you scavenge the dangerous landscape for supplies to build the ultimate combat vehicle of your dreams. Price is great, if you have spare money just grab it without any regrets. Titanfall 2 Ultimate Edition if you don't know what Titanfall is, for you it probably looks like a multiplayer battle royale of some sort, but it is not. The game actually features a very nice single-player campaign packed with action and inventive twists. Here you play as a militia rifleman stranded behind enemy lines and you encounter a lonely titan and then you become friends. You play chess together, go to movies and kill people. Well, everything except killing is a lie, you just kill. And of course there is a multiplayer portion of the game with fast-paced first-person action with titans and deadly pilot abilities. This version of the game includes all the deluxe and jump starter content, which includes new titans, war paint, weapons, tokens and even more. People on Steam are talking that the game runs great and is fun to play in general. It has 94% of positive reviews, so it's close to being a masterpiece. And this price is more than great. Death's Door overwhelmingly positive review score should immediately inspire your curiosity. Here you control a crow, some kind of bird-like grim reaper. Suddenly your assigned soul is stolen and you must track down a desperate thief to a realm untouched by death. Here creatures grow far past their expiry date and overflow with greed and power. Well, this place honestly sounds like a parliament of every country. You will have a vast array of melee weapons, various arrows and powerful magic to overcome a fantastic bunch of beasts and demigods. The land is full of twisted inhabitants and countless secrets, just like Parliament. Anyway, he will experience a somber yet darkly comedic tale and uncover the darkest secret. Age of Wonders 3 this franchise, along with the Heroes of Might and Magic, is one of the most beloved among turn-based strategy fans. Here you can create an empire in your own image and rule as one of six RPG-style leader classes. People on Steam are talking that this game feels like Civilization had a baby with Heroes of Might and Magic and that is great. Although I must say that despite Age of Wonders being fun to play, it doesn't feel very balanced. The game emphasizes warfare and exploration but doesn't give you enough resources to actually do these things without waiting forever. You know, that feeling when in Heroes of Might and Magic, you just wanted to buy a dragon, but you have no money, so you skipped several turns so you could finally afford it. But then Monday came and you felt short with your money again. And then you just lost to Easy AI because it had a bigger army anyway. How that happened, you don't know, but getting that dragon was worth skipping turns anyway. Age of Wonders 3 invokes the same feeling over and over again. Still, a wonderful game. Tiny Tina's Wonderlands with a name like that, you probably wouldn't expect violence, blood and partial nudity in this action RPG looter shooter. But this is what this game is all about because it is a spin-off of the Borderlands. First Tiny Tina's Adventure was a DLC for the Borderlands itself and came out in 2013. Later it was released as a standalone game and flopped massively. It has mixed reviews on Steam so developers decided to take another shot. So Tiny Tina's Wonderlands is a first-person shooter RPG game, you know like Cyberpunk 2077 which is not a a very common thing these days and for that only deserves your attention. Although it has mostly positive review score on Steam, so think twice if you are not made of money. Torchlight 2 some people say that this is a spiritual brother of Diablo 2, but I can't agree with that. It's very cartoony, the models and color palette reminds me of Disney princess movies rather than a dark and cursed world infested by demons. To be honest, the color palette of Torchlight is the main reason why Diablo fans often ignore this game. And that's a shame. Torchlight 2 is great, very complex and fun, so don't hesitate, it may become one of the best action RPG games you have ever played. Or not, but ignoring it is a crime. Or more likely a blasphemy. You won't get access to Game Hala after your death if you never try to play Torchlight 2. People on Steam are talking that the build possibilities are endless and the loot never stops coming. Also, it's the best Torchlight game ever made. 93% of positive reviews is the best proof of that. 
8-bit invaders. If StarCraft spent the night with Minecraft, 8-bit invaders would be the result of this affair. This is a fast-paced RTS, a very colorful strategy arcade game that is easy to learn for players of all skill levels. Collect resources, build and defend your base, amass your army of tanks and starships and ultimately crush humans with your metal tentacles or otherwise show the aliens who's the real boss here. Probably not you and I don't blame you. You will find 24 campaign missions and 10 co-op missions to play with your mother in law, destructible environments and you know who the composer is? Frank Klepaki, the same dude who created music for Command and Conquer 26 years ago. He was 17 back then. And if you feel that this 8-bit setting is appealing to you, keep in mind that you can also find two more games, 8-bit armies that are made with the fans of Command and Conquer in mind and 8-bit hordes that can be appealing to Warcraft fans. War for the Overworld the game is spiritual successor of Dungeon Keeper. Some even call it Dungeon Keeper 3. Well, it's not. It is similar, but also different in its own way. You know, like King's Bounty is not Heroes of Might and Magic, so it's the same here. You'll find replayability across many game modes that will keep you entertained for 40 hours or even more if you are, you know, a bit slower. You see, being smart is not always good. You get more playtime if your IQ is lower. Anyway, here you'll have to take care of various demons, devils, evil wizards, gnomes and creepy villains. You are a dungeon master or dungeon mistress who tries to build a cozy environment for those creatures, so they would live in your dungeon and not somewhere else. Also, in this game you can punish your minions if you like. There can be many reasons. Let's say you can punish them for being not supportive, grumpy or just because you can. There is a device called the meat grinder. Use it wisely. Hell let loose. This is a hardcore World War II first-person shooter with epic battles of 100 players with infantry, tanks, artillery, a dynamically shifting frontline and a unique resource-based RTS-inspired metagame. People on Steam are talking that 80% of the time you will spend either dead, walking or heavily suppressed. You can spawn half of a time without getting insta-killed by artillery or accurate fire, but the fact is that you don't mind. Those few moments when you kill somebody who has just spawned are precious and you will not give them up for anything. People on Steam are also saying that this game is mentally and physically exhausting and you will see body parts flying everywhere all the time. In other words, 10 out of 10, a must play. Overland this is a survival strategy game which takes place in a not-so-distant future where a cataclysm completely devastated the North American continent. You will lead a constantly changing group of survivors who, traveling by car, are trying to reach their destination point. Survival plays a crucial role in the game. You will be forced to make difficult decisions and face constant shortages of gas, supplies and ammunition. However, the biggest threat you will have to face are the monsters that use their hearing to hunt down their prey. In other words, they hunt you. Also, so you'll have to save dogs here. There are a lot of dogs in this game. Black Mesa. This is actually a Half-Life, just with better graphics and better, you know, everything. Keep in mind that this is not just a simple remaster, this is a quality remake that expands the scope of the original and massively improves its final chapters. Game is made by fans, but it's made so well that you can find Black Mesa officially on Steam, where it's an owner of overwhelmingly positive reviews. And to be honest, today Black Mesa is the best way to experience Half-Life. No clunky old-school graphics, no compatibility problems, great gameplay and a really interesting sound suspenseful story. Half-Life is awesome and Black Mesa may be the greatest way for you to play it. In Other Waters this is one of the coolest indie games I have stumbled on recently. Story begins when Ellery is called to the planet Gliese, only to arrive at an abandoned base. She finds herself adrift in an ocean of secrets with little more than a malfunctioning diving suit and a strange AI to guide her. And you play not as an Ellery, as you already assumed, but as this AI. How the turns have tabled, huh? So you have to guide Ellery and keep her safe as you dive deeper and explore an underwater alien landscape. The planet's unique life and its dark history are your stone cover and the bond between you and Ellery will be tested by the secrets you learn. People are talking that this game floats somewhere between an art project, a work of fiction and an experiment in minimalist UI design. I absolutely agree and I will add the fact that this game is awesome and if you like stuff like that you should definitely try it out. Against the Storm 
game was just released, that's why the discount is not as big as I want it to be, but it has 96% of positive review score, so let's not be afraid of the word masterpiece. This is a roguelite city builder set in a gloomy fantasy world. Artistically, this is one of the coolest RTS city builder games I have seen lately, except one thing, here it never stops raining. And I hate rain. In my country Lithuania, rain is always cold, even in the summer and in any other season, it feels like an ice needles piercing my puny body straight to the bone. Also, I wear glasses, so it's a thing that's really hard to love. Anyway, here you are a pioneer sent into the wilds to establish and manage new settlements inhabited by smart beavers, lizards and humans. Your goal is to survive long enough and gather the valuable resources necessary to rebuild and upgrade your city. It's the only safe haven against the Blightstorm, a vile cycle of destruction ravaging everything in its path. Aliens Fireteam Elite have you ever wanted to be a protagonist in an alien movie? Well, honestly, nobody cares what you want. Also, if yes, w what is wrong with you? Anyway, then you need to play Alien Isolation because this one is nothing like the movies. Although it's really fun to play if you have a friend or two. You can play in single player as well, but I assure you that if you want full experience, you will have to find some friends. I know that may be mission impossible, but you can try anyway. You don't need real friends. All you need is some Discord channel with the same minded people. So here you'll be exploring some friendly planet filled with friendly fauna and live in harmony all together. Except you don't. This game is a carnage where you will have to battle through hordes of different types of xenomorph, customize your character and gear and level up as you try to contain this ever-growing threat. I especially like the diversity of enemies in this game, they really took their time to create some nasty monsters. The game itself is basically left for dead just with aliens. I think it's great and 81% of Steam reviews are also positive. So if you like this video, there is another. Click on it and you will enjoy even more short reviews of the games I have made specifically for this Steam Winter Sale event. Also, subscribe, you know that you like it here. Thank you for watching, have a nice day and I'll see you next time. Bye!